So welcome to Make It Monday. I'm Jim with Amy Sos. And hi, Elaine. And um, we have something a little different for you today. We're going to be doing turned applique. Unlike, as you see behind me, Sharon's towel, and there's still openings if you want to join the Tea Towel of the Month Club, where she had a cut edge piece of fabric for the applique and then satin stitch over the edge. We're going to do an effect where you actually take the applique and make it larger, turn the edge under, and then sew it to your background. So I'm going to spin over to the overhead to explain what I mean. So let's say, for example, this is my applique piece. And what I will do with it is I will go and add a little more fabric to it. So when I place it down, I'm going to trace over it. And I want to add a quarter of an inch seam allowance because basically what I'm going to do is, let's say for this is like a fabric, I would take it, this is right side, wrong side. I would turn it over a quarter of an inch, press it, and then lay it on top of my background and either hand slip stitch it to make it invisible or do a machine technique, which I'll show you in a bit. And that will attach it to your background fabric. But first, like in this case where it's curved, we need to add a seam allowance. And there's a couple different ways to do it. You can either add it, like measure with a quarter of an inch with your ruler, or we could do this little trick where you put a magnet on the tip of your scissors and just kind of guide along where the side of the magnet is along my drawn line. And I can get a fairly accurate quarter inch seam allowance. And then of course I would go ahead and do my clipping and turning because when you're doing like a curve piece, it takes a little bit of clipping to do that. Um, the sample I have, I needed a lot of circles where I thought the circle is probably the hardest thing to do. So this is my template for my applique. And the finished piece is about an inch and an eighth in diameter. So that meant a lot of cutting. So I wanted to speed up the process a little bit. So I incorporated my scan and cut and I had it go and cut out all my pieces for me. And as you can see, here's a strip of it where it did it, this whole strip in about two minutes. So I got a really nice, perfect cutout for all my applique. So if you're wondering what to do with your scanning machines that do the automatic cutting, et cetera, this is one way to do it. You could bring it into your sewing room and have it cut out all the different pieces you need for your applique. What I liked about it also was when I took my pattern and scanned it in, I can then go to the machine or the software and tell it to add a quarter of an inch seam allowance to it and eliminate the first line and just have it do the cutting line. And that way I have a true acre, quarter of an inch, all the way around all my applique pieces. So it was a lot less work to do it that way. And when I was first learning how to do like applique like this, and I was reading a couple of different books and a couple of different techniques, one of them said that when you're doing this, you're going to go ahead and clip it, turn it over, take your iron and do a lot of pressing, which quite often ends up with a lot of burnt fingertips. Uh, another method was you got a heavyweight piece of mylar that was heat resistant. And you would cut that out as your template, lay it on top, do your clipping, take a little bit of uh, starch, and you're going to put it just along the seam allowance edge, fold it over so it would help hold it in place. And then you're going to go ahead and press it with your iron to fuse it in, to, in position. And basically, again, that's going to probably burn your fingertips if you're not too careful. And you would then have to slide this out and then repress it so you get a nice clean edge. So it does work, but it does take a little bit of effort with your iron. So I got a different way to show you, because you know, if you've taken one of my classes, I do things kind of differently. I actually cut out a second piece. So I have my first piece cut out in my fabric. Again, with a quarter of an inch seam allowance added to my original size, which was here. And what I do is I actually sew 
my fabric applique to a piece of wash away stabilizer. So I have my bolt of um, peel and stick. So if you're not familiar with it, you're probably not a machine embroiderer, but this is a lightweight piece of material, kind of like interfacing, that's totally water soluble. You put it in a washer and it totally dissolves away. This one actually comes with a paper backing attached to it. So here I have like the fibrous part, my paper backing. And what's nice with that is, is that this will actually peel off there we go, of the backing. So right now I'm leaving this attached to the paper backing and I'm going to cut out a whole bunch of circles again to make it to, for the back of my applique. I'm not going to cut this out at a quarter of an inch seam allowance like I did before. I'm going to do it with like a three eighths to almost a half inch bigger than my original. So what I did was I took my original applique piece, sent it to my scan and cut, added the seam allowance I wanted it to. In three minutes, it cut out a whole sheet of circles. That's pretty good cutting for three minutes. And uh, I will share this. Don't throw this away because I got a tip for that. I'll share with you sometime later. So once I have all my pieces done, I had my circle cut out. And I will share a tip with you too, that um, when you work with this, I put my paper side down, I believe, so that it was easier to pull it off the mat. Because I was a little concerned that if I put the water soluble side down, that it may not peel off as easily as I would like. And that possibly it would um, even separate from the paper because I didn't want that to do that at first. So once I have my two done, I'm going to go and take the paper side and have it face me. The paper side, again, is covering the adhesive. So this is like the plain side of the stabilizer. Adhesive side back here. I take my circle and I put it face down. So the pretty side is against the paper. I then sewed with a quarter of an inch seam allowance using the edge of the fabric as a guide. There's a lot of feet out there that you can use. Um, you could have like a traditional quarter inch piecing foot, even with a guide attached to it like that. There's even ones out there that are clear. Again, that has a little side guide for you. So you have oops, your edge guide that you can put it right on your machine. Personally, I like using this little foot. Because what I did was I actually went and drew a line on mine because I was having a little difficulty seeing the edge of it because it's off to the side and the foot's a little big. For me, it was easier just to use this as a guide. And I just made sure my stitching was, or my drawn line was right in the middle of the toe of the foot. And I just sewed around in a circle. So you just make the decision of what foot works best for you. And that's what you're going to put on. And for the thread... I use regular sewing machine thread, but there is a difference because when you work with regular sewing machine thread, you know, it's nice and strong, but when you add the double layer, it's going to make it a little thick and that could make the edge of the applique a little heavy. I use this thread we have in the shop. It's a hundred weight. It's very, very fine. You can, I can barely see it on my camera there, but it's a very fine thread, just as strong as a traditional sewing machine thread, but a lot lighter. So I'm gonna use my 100 weight in my needle and my bobbin, and I'm gonna use a straight stitch length and I'm gonna shorten it. So if my stitch came up at 2.5, I might bring it down to like a two or even a 1.8. I want a short, tight stitch. The reason for that is it's easier to go around a curve with a shorter stitch length. I'll make sure that every time I stop sewing, my needle stops down in the fabric and my presser foot lifts up so I can easily steer it. So then basically that's all your machine setup. A short straight stitch length and press your foot up, needle down, and then start sewing. You don't need a back stitch. Just sew over maybe like a quarter of an inch. And then once you get them all sewn, they'll look like that.
So on the back side, you can see my stitching. Okay. Once I get this done, I'm then going to go and turn the edges up like that. So again, there's a little bulk here. So you want to trim the excess amount of uh, fabric away. Actually, just clip into it. You could use uh, your duckbill applique scissors or a very sharp uh, edge nip like these Bomores. Personally, I like to use my thread snips. These are also by Fomori, they're titanium, and they have a really nice sharp point on it. I have a ring on this one, so I know at home, this is the one I cut fabric with. So I can easily just come right in here and under the edge of the fabric, I have the bottom of the blade against the paper stabilizer, and I'm just clipping right to it. And I'm trying not to cut into the stitching, but it's so tight, I'm not really worried about it. And you can just see in a couple seconds, I got the whole thing clipped all the way around. I would then work on my pressing board and I would, I could just start by finger pressing, but the better way to do it would be to use an iron and I have my little palm iron with me. And what I would do would be, I would normally go ahead and press it like that with the tip of the iron. What's nice about this is, is that since you don't have to um, put the spray starch on whatever, if there's no chance you like burning your fingertips, the paper stabilizer is gonna hold it in place. You want it about the heat setting that the fabric can tolerate. And you just do it like that. And then, I'll take the tip of the blade, score the paper stabilizer. And because the stitching is so tight, it perforated the backing. So I can remove the stabilizer all the way around. And then I'll clip again. The reason I do it twice is I would have to go and pull out all those little bits of paper. So it's easier just to pull off the ring as you saw. And then what I'll do is one by one, fold over all those little pieces and press it in place because now the stabilizer is also acting like tape. So it's going to hold all of those seam allowances in place for me. So just with a few minutes, I can get it looking like that. So I have the nice round shape. The stitching will keep the fabric in shape prevent it from you clipping too far in and also prevent it from fraying as you're working with it. Then the next thing is you want to go and turn it inside out. And the one drawback is if you're a little too oh, uh, aggressive when you go to poke that hole in the middle to clip it, especially if you've got really good sharp scissors, what you may want to consider is when you're at your scan and cut, have it cut a little Y in the middle. So I actually have these pre-cut so I can easily turn it inside out. And one of the ways I do quite often is I just go ahead and roll it up in a little ball. Even though it's nice and pressed smooth, I find for me, it's easier than to take it and to turn it right side out. Uh, if you have fingernails, you could use that to help you turn them inside out. What I quite often do is I'll use a stiletto, whether it's a, um, a wooden one, or if you have one of these, just gonna slip it on your finger, and then you can use that to work under to turn all those edges right around for you like that, so that you have a nice turned applique. And I will warn you, though, that when you first turn it, it's like a little puffy because it's nice and um, kind of in its natural relaxed state. What you could do is you could then go ahead and repress this flat. Again, not so hot as a, nor you normally would for the fabric, just a little bit cooler because this way you don't want to um, run the chance of having it stick a little harder to the paper when you go to peel it off. And the other thing too is no water in your iron. Make sure you're not using steam. It's just a plain dry iron. You don't want it to get it wet. 
one thing though too is if you like it a little puffy when you go to applique this on you can easily slip some polyfill underneath it to do trapunto effects if you wanted to do a little puff applique but the fun thing with this is is that not only does the stabilizer and the thread hold the fabric shape together make it easy to turn it so all your seam allowances are now in case when you peel off the paper backing which just comes right off I can easily take this and stick it on my fabric and it doesn't move. I don't have to use straight pans, clips, glue sticks, nothing. It's now stuck. If I'm not happy with the positioning, I can peel it off and do it again. And it'll stay there until the project's washed. So there's no, gonna, no added bulk to all of this. Then I can go ahead and do my handwork and do a slip stitch or I can take it to the sewing machine and do a machine stitch. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, one of them, well, basically they all kind of look like this on your indicator of your machine, where the machine will take a stitch forward, then one to the left, back in the same hole and forward again. Be a little careful because a lot of times uh, it looks like the blanket binding stitch. The difference with that is actually It'll sew forward, backward, forward, then left, right, left again, and then forward, backward, forward. So it makes a heavier stitch. You want the one that has a straight stitch and a little tiny stitch. Um, some machines may call it the heirloom applique stitch, the pointy puri. Um, if you're not sure, just take a scrap of fabric and do some stitch outs with it. You want to have it where the length isn't as long. Also, the width isn't as long. You want it a little tighter so that it actually will affix the applique a little better. And then it'll also help to disappear. The thread, you can either use the background color or the color of your applique. And the straight stitch will be in the fabric. And then you'll have that little pick coming to the left like that as you sew around. Sometimes what I may do is if I can't find a, a right thread that blends in with the background or the applique, I may get a muddy color of thread, meaning I'll look at the color of the background, the color of my applique, and I get a color kind of in between the two so it'll blend with each one. And I always pivot and stop with the needle in the fabric as I come along. And you want to hit just the edge like that. And in a couple minutes, you got a finished applique. And uh, like I said, it, everything kind of stays in position. I haven't sewn this one yet, but you get the idea that with all those little circles I made, I can make a cl cluster of grapes. So all of these circles only took three minutes to cut and a couple minutes to sit at the machine, sew it up. And then last night, actually, I was watching a recap of the, of the coronation and just sat there and turned everything right side up, made it really easy. If you got some green fabric, maybe take that and then uh, use like a heavyweight uh, fusible. So you can do double-sided raw edge applique and then add a couple leaves to it. And then maybe even one for like a 3D effect. So with a couple minutes, I can do like a really nice grape applique for a, a quilt project, a pillow, whatever. And but hopefully you can even take this idea and use it for your own projects. So uh, hopefully you like, oh, thank you, Agnes. <laughs> so if you're not sure about how to do the technique, just go ahead and watch it again. And uh, be sure to share it with your friends too, because we appreciate um, you telling your friends about our Make It Mondays, because we try to be here every Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And um, also, if you are new to Amy Sews, be sure to go to the website, sign up uh, for the newsletters. And of course, we have different sales going on, et cetera. So you do want to head and uh, sign up and be sure to tell a friend. We really appreciate it. And don't forget, we got openings for the applique tea towel of the month. And right now our serger and our scan and cut boxes are closed, but be sure to get on the waiting list for that too. So hopefully we will see you in our shop. We are in Harmony, Pennsylvania. And if you like the products, I mentioned that several of them are on our website that you can shop there or you can first come in the store and pick it up in person. 
So thank you, April, and everybody for watching right now and for all your positive comments. We do appreciate it. And again, be sure to share with a friend. And if you have a suggestion for a Make It Money, don't be afraid to go ahead and put it in the comments below so that uh, hopefully we could bring you more topics that you're kind of interested in doing. So thank you ever for, so much for watching. And remember, the more you know, the more you sow. Have a great day.